Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, New A-plus Enhancement to Jumpstart Your Investing Journey, led by Wayne Thorpe. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We are happy to have you here. My name is Jennifer Shear, and I'll be your host for today. I want to remind all of our webinar viewers that AAII is a nonprofit educational group and is not a financial advisor, and thus is not able to give personal advice. Every investor is different. That's why our goal with each broadcast and article is to educate you on how to make better financial decisions. A handout of the presentation is available under the handout section of your GoToWebinar control panel located on the right hand side of the screen. And if you have questions for our speaker, please submit them using the question section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Our moderator for today, Derek Hagman, will select questions submitted and read them aloud for the benefit of all watching the broadcast. Questions that are not selected for the broadcast will be reviewed and addressed afterwards. If you experience any issues with the audio or video of the webinar, please consult the instructions on how to change your device's settings or consult the GoToWebinar website for support at gotowebinar.com. And a friendly reminder that this presentation is recorded and a replay of the webinar will be available tomorrow on AAII's YouTube channel, along with the links uh, to this presentation's handouts as well as any resources we discuss. For all of our new viewers, we'd like to give a little background about our organization. The American Association of Individual Investors is an independent nonprofit corporation formed in 1978 for the purpose of assisting individuals in becoming effective managers of their own assets through programs of education, information, and research. Hi there. So we did have some technical difficulties at today's live viewing, and we'd like to apologize for any inconvenience we may have caused. Therefore, we do want to preface that our replay has a slight hiccup in the beginning. And again, we apologize and appreciate your patience and understanding. So to cater to those needs that have been communicated to us, uh, we created A Plus Investor, which we launched in early 2020. A Plus Investor is an investment discovery analysis and tracking service. It tracks a universe of over 7,000 stocks that trade on US exchanges, as well as more than 24,000 open-ended funds, 600 closed-end funds, and nearly 3,000 exchange-traded funds, or ETFs. A Plus Investor also provides a framework for identifying and analyzing stock, mutual fund, and ETF opportunities from those universes. It also allows users to track and analyze their own portfolios or watch lists. But once we create a product, we're always working to enhancements. You know, we don't relaunch something and then move on from it. There's always that you know feedback loop, uh, and you know, that's one of the nice things from about our our membership is you know they're very vocal with their uh, you know typically constructive criticism uh, and suggestions. And so when we launched A Plus Investor, we were deluged with uh, a, a number of uh, requests uh, and comments. And so with that, you know we rely heavily on feedback to help us identify and prioritize product and service enhancements. Uh, so, you know, over the last quarter or so, we've actually rolled out some pretty significant enhancements uh, based uh, directly on the feedback that we would we had been receiving from A plus investors. Uh, we are now tracking uh, over 600 US and Canadian closed end funds, which we weren't when we first launched. Uh, we've added coverage of over 500 Canadian stocks. And at least for me, probably the most significant uh, the most significant enhancement we've launched over the last quarter or so is the custom stock screener. Uh, and with that, you can run personalized custom stock screens uh, over a number of universes uh, or select uh, subsets of the universe. But I'll talk about those, uh, those features uh, a little bit later. So actually what I'm going to do now, and I always take a, a deep breath when I do this, but uh, I'm actually going to switch over to the AI website and try to conduct a more live demo uh, of some of the key features of A Plus Investor. So, you know, technology is a wonderful thing as long as it works. So, you know, let's uh, keep our fingers crossed uh, that we will do that. Uh, so with any luck at all, you are now seeing uh, the AI.com website uh, and specifically, the My Investor, uh, My A Plus Investor Toolkit. Oops, it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, sorry about this, folks. Okay, so with the My Plus A My A Plus Investor Toolkit. You know, this is actually sort of the landing page uh, for A Plus Investor, and it's broken down into three, uh, the four primary components that sort of encompass A Plus Investor. We have my portfolio, 
which is the portfolio tracking tool uh, of AAII. We also then have a stock section, funds or open-ended funds, as well as ETFs. So if you're starting out with uh, A plus investor uh, and you're trying to you know, figure out where you should start, the AAI.com slash plus area is a great way to start because it highlights some of the key features uh, of each of these segments uh, of A plus investor. So we're going to actually start off then with uh, my portfolio. And I have no idea why we decide to keep doing this. So let's see if this will. <clears throat> there we go. So the, the purpose of the My Portfolio tool is to allow users to track all of their holdings in a single location and perform analysis of those holdings. Uh, with the tool, you can track performance of your holdings, uh, access in-depth data on stock, mutual fund, and ETF holdings, uh, as well as analyze your portfolio to see if it meets your style or temperament. And then lastly, we also provide uh, portfolio insights to identify strong and weak holdings. Now, you know, I must admit, my portfolio is not designed to be a full featured portfolio management system. I view it more as a portfolio tracking system. So like when I'm tracking my holdings, I actually just enter in uh, my aggregate holdings at uh, the current point in time. And then as I add stocks you know, or sell off positions or add new positions, I just modify my total number of holdings. Uh, I don't use it to track all of the individual transactions. And um, admittedly, uh, it's really not designed to do that. Um, you know, that's probably functionality you're going to see that's more offered by more, more brokerage platforms and all that information is already there. Um, but for the, the, the sake of being able to analyze portfolios, entering in your aggregate holdings uh, definitely will unlock uh, those, those powerful features uh, associated with A Plus Investor. So the My Portfolio Holdings, uh, you know, I've actually created uh, multiple portfolios, as you can see here, uh, and I'll just pull up uh, one of the portfolios that I track and just run you through some of the different tabs that are associated uh, with uh, my portfolio. So you have a, a default view. Um, you know, this probably looks very similar to a lot of the portfolio trackers that you see either on your, your brokerage uh, account uh, or something like that. Uh, so probably no, really no surprises here when you're when you're looking uh, at this. But again, it's a, it provides you uh, a single location to keep track and analyze uh, all of your holdings uh, of the individual portfolio. Uh, so this table is broken down actually into several tables. You have the default view that gives you, you know, your current price, the daily change, shares hold if you uh, enter this information in, as well as the market value, uh, et cetera. Uh, you know, it's in, it's important to point out, though, and I'll be talking about some of this a little bit later, is the fact that the more information you enter in when you're creating portfolio, the more powerful the analytics uh, that uh, A plus, the My Portfolio section uh, of A plus Investor is able to do for you. So, you know, you can use it as a uh, portfolio tracker, uh, sort of a watch list uh, type mechanism where you just put in tickers and then you have those uh, tickers in a single list. But if you are tracking your actual holdings, so you put in uh, you know, the number of shares that you hold, uh, the, the price at which you purchased it, things of that nature, then you're able to really capitalize on some of the powerful analytic tools uh, that come uh, with my, my portfolio. So you know, we have, again, uh, walking through, you know, we just have the typical intraday, monthly, uh, gain and loss since purchase, uh, fundamental information, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Really nothing really different than what you would see uh, with a lot of uh, different portfolio trackers. Um, one thing though is useful uh, as an exclusive to uh, my portfolio uh, is the grades tab. Uh, we've created uh, a number of grades uh, with A Plus Investor 
both for stocks as well, uh, I'm sorry, for stocks, ETFs, and the uh, open-ended funds. Uh, on the stock side, uh, these are basically, these are grades that focus on five different investment factors, value, growth, momentum, EPS revisions and surprises, as well as quality. And we have a number of underlying uh, data points that are used to arrive at each of these uh, different uh, factor grades, uh, all of which are available, uh, and I can touch on those a little bit later, but the, this isn't a black box system. You can see exactly uh, the information that goes into generating these grades. But on the uh, grades tab of my portfolio, you can actually then pull up and see what the grades are for the stocks in your stock hold and your uh, portfolio that you're looking at. So we have our stock grades and we also have ETF and mutual fund grades uh, based on elements of performance, uh, expenses uh, and category risk. And the grades for ETFs and mutual funds uh, are based on uh, an individual funds uh, ranking relative to the average of its category. Uh, whereas for the stock grades, that is looking at the entire stock universe. Uh, so example, we have uh, on the Invesco Builders Emerging Markets 50 uh, ADR ETF. So it has a one-year return uh, of F. Uh, and that F is based on the average performance of all of the different ETFs that are in the category, not the overall ETF uh, universe. Uh, another element that is exclusive uh, to a plus investor subscribers within my portfolio is the diversification analyzer. And with this, you're able to get an idea based on AAII uh, asset allocation models, not only to see you know, how your overall portfolio stacks up relative to uh, a conservative, moderate, or aggressive asset allocation, but then you can also drill down further and start looking at uh, the, your diversification across sectors, uh, market cap, uh, et cetera. But, you know, starting out looking at the asset allocation. So, you know, I'm someone, you know, I'm, uh, you know, mid forties. Uh, and so, you know, realistically, I probably have a good 20 or 30 years to go uh, before I retire. Uh, so for that reason, I have uh, considered myself uh, an aggressive uh, investor. So based on AAII's model, uh, asset allocation models, um, it looks at my overall stock portfolio that I'm looking at in this case, my retirement portfolio, and it compares my holdings relative to the allocation suggested for an aggressive investor. Uh, it's important to point out that these are only sort of academic suggestions. You know, We are not uh, investment advisors, AI is not an investor's service. So these are more guidelines. These are not you know, saying that these is how you should invest. These are merely uh, guidelines. But as someone, you know, based on our aggressive investor asset allocation and looking at my allocation, uh, I can see that uh, I'm actually uh, overweighted in domestic stocks, underweighted uh, in foreign stocks, uh, as well as slightly underweighted uh, in uh, bonds. Uh, so, you know, again, this will give you an indication uh, of, you know, if you are an aggressive investor based on some of these different asset allocation models, gives you an idea of whether or not, you know, am I truly an aggressive investor? You know, if I had turned myself uh, an aggressive investor and found that, you know, I was you know, 20 percent or 20 or 30 percent in domestic stocks, very low allocation of foreign stock, but very high allocation of bonds, then one of two things has to give. Either I am not truly an aggressive investor and I'm kind of lying to myself to say that I am an aggressive investor or that I've completely botched my asset allocation and that yes, I am truly am an aggressive investor uh, and I'm currently have an asset allocation that is not reflective of that. Uh, and so I might need to either adjust how I view myself or adjust my overall portfolio. But then once you've come up with that, not even looking beyond looking at the asset allocation based on domestic and foreign stocks, bonds, cash, uh, et cetera, you can also, and this is looking at all of the holdings in your portfolio. So stocks, mutual funds, uh, ETFs. 
at the stock diversification level, it looks at individual stock holdings as well as the equity portions of stock of open-ended funds and ETFs. And so you can see how you're uh, diversified or perhaps not diversified uh, across uh, the S&P 500 sectors. Uh, so again, looking at my retirement portfolio, you know, do I care that I am almost 40% uh, invested on the stock side in consumer cyclicals? Uh, also have a very high concentration nearing 30% of my stock holdings uh, in the healthcare industry. Uh, you know, this sort of mimics uh, my aggressive allocation. Uh, I'm not, I'm a firmer believer that in order to beat the market, you can't be the market. So, you know, it's not surprising that my allocations across these different sectors don't mimic uh, that uh, of the, uh, you know, the S&P 500 or the, the overall marketplace. Um, then when you start looking at so size diversification and geographic diversification, those are based exclusively on your stock holdings. Um, but I'll touch on a little bit later, uh, some of the new enhancements that we're looking to be rolling out uh, for A plus investor is to being able to look at size diversification across not only stocks, but funds and ETFs uh, and the same thing uh, for geographic diversification as well. So those are actually a couple of the projects that I'm working on uh, this quarter. Then one last element of my portfolio that I wanna to touch on before we move on to the other segments uh, is the insight section. Uh, so with this insights area, we look uh, at your portfolio and highlight some things that might be of, of interest uh, to an individual investor given some of the data points and data elements we have with A plus investor. Uh, so for example, you know, within the my retirement portfolio, uh, I'm tracking 12 securities. Uh, of the stocks that I hold in this portfolio, two of them are currently passing one of the AAI stock idea screens. Uh, 11, so let's see, so I have 11 of the 20 individual grades for my stocks uh, have a B or better grade. So there are five, uh, so that means um, there are five factor grades for each stock. Uh, so five into 20, that means I track four stocks so of those four stocks, um, 11, uh, there are 11 uh, different grades amongst those four stocks that are B or better. And then I also, amongst the funds and ETFs that I hold, I have three ETF insights. And looking at these insights, uh, this could be you know, dealing with rel volatility. So two of the three ETFs in my portfolio are more volatile than normal within its category. Uh, but then also two of the three of my ETFs have lower expenses uh, than the uh, average fund ETF in its category. Uh, and then looking at my mutual fund holdings, five of the five funds that I hold also have uh, lower expense ratios than the average of its category. So, you know, if you, you know, paying attention to things like volatility uh, and expenses are important. You know, they can have long-term impacts on your overall performance. So these insights will draw yourself to draw attention to some of your holdings. Again, not necessarily to say, you know, this is bad, you need to get uh, to sell it, but at least alert you to the fact that this might be something you wanna look into uh, and make a decision, but not necessarily make a knee-jerk uh, decision. So this is sort of the, the My Portfolio uh, section. Uh, you know, Derek, I'm just curious if any st any questions have come in uh, regarding the my portfolio section before I transition. Yeah, uh, Wayne, there there are a few questions that came through. Um, one is consistent among a, a couple of the participants. They were they were asking, you know, can they import their portfolios directly from their their broker, for example, TD Ameritrade, yeah. or uh, if they have their holdings in a Excel spreadsheet, are are they do those interact with uh, my portfolio? Uh, as of now, uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, that is something we're definitely trying to address. Uh, and it's uh, unfortunately, I, I'm I'm not a programmer, uh, and I'm always get scolded when I say that, but I'm not. Um, but uh, we have a very talented group of programmers and developers at the association uh, that have been looking into this uh, as a possibility. 
uh, don't have any time frame on it, but uh, currently you're not able to import uh, either transactions or overall holdings, uh, you would have to manually enter those in. And then uh, just one more, I think it uh, was in reference to the diversification analyzer. Uh, one participant was just at asking what an example of, uh, there was a category called other investments. Uh, do you know what would fit in that category? Uh, other would be, um, uh, tip of my tongue, uh, derivatives mainly. Uh, that would be the, the biggest, uh, and I think probably preferred stock might also, I don't think preferred stocks are lumped into bonds. I think that also would fall into the uh, the other category as well. Okay, great. Yep, I think that's uh, that's all so far. Thanks, Wayne. Excellent. Well, now we're going to transition and talk about you know the ways and the tools and the resources that A Plus Investor provides uh, to help investors find winning stock investing strategies and stock ideas. Uh, and we have a number of different elements uh, available when it comes to uh, identifying potential stock opportunities. Uh, and these uh, rely heavily uh, on some on stock screening. Uh, I've been involved in fundamental stock screening pretty much since, oh, literally from day one at, at the association uh, back in 1997. Uh, so I'm heavily involved with that. Um, but with uh, A Plus Investor, you know, we have, uh, we track over 60 different uh, stock screening ideas. Um, so these are, you know, rules-based quantitative fundamental filters that look through the universe of roughly 7,000 stocks. Um, these filters are run daily for A-plus investor subscribers um, as of the previous day's close. Uh, and it will provide you the passing companies on a daily basis of the 60 or so different stock streams. They're broken down by factors as well as gurus. Uh, so with this, you know, uh, here are some of our factor screens. Uh, so we can sort these. So sorting our factor screens by annualized tenure performance. Uh, we have our estimate revisions, uh, top 30 uh, upward revision screen. Uh, so basically, uh, every day, uh, this screen looks for stocks that have seen the greatest uh, uptick in its consensus estimates uh, over the last month. Uh, and so you have, you know, this, the performance of the strategy, which is done extremely well. Uh, you have the passing companies, as well as then uh, what what the actual strategy is. So again, these are not, this isn't a black box system. Uh, we provide you the explicit uh, instructions on how we arrive uh, at these uh, different uh, approaches. But then, you know, once you've actually looked at uh, the a, a screen and, you know, if you're looking at the passing companies, uh, you also then have the ability to pull up on an individual basis, uh, stock evaluators for each of these uh, so you can click on this. Again, you have access to the A plus stock grades that I touched on a little bit earlier. Uh, but then within this stock evaluator page, you can actually then go to the, the grades area and you can actually then start drilling down. So for example, the value grade consists of uh, the price of sales, price to earnings, enterprise value to EBITDA, shareholder yield, price to book value and price to free cash flow. And so you can see then how an individual company's individual elements of these different uh, grades also stack up. So you can see what the value is for the individual company, what the percentile rank is for that particular field, uh, as well as what the sector median is. Um, and you have that information again for all of the underlying elements that make up each of the five different uh, A plus stock grades. Also looking at screens, uh, you know, we also provide what are called uh, the screen power rankings. So the screen power rankings take all of the 60 AAI stock idea screens and allows you to sort them based on uh, performance over year to date, one, three, five, 10, and 20 years uh, since inception, uh, as well as risk adjusted returns, overall risk, 
as well as performance over the last bear uh, and bull markets. So for example, if I wanna look, I'm gonna sort all of our stock idea screens by risk adjusted return. Uh, and this is dating back again, uh, basically since the beginning of 1998. So since the beginning of 1998, uh, another one of our upward uh, revision screens, this one looking at uh, stocks who've seen their consensus estimate increase by at least 5% over the last month, uh, that has returned an an risk adjusted annualized return of 16.7%. Um, so you're able to sort all of these different strategies by a number of different uh, performance uh, time periods. So it'll help you allow you to focus in on maybe a select number uh, of stock idea screens that you might want to focus on and then start looking at the stocks that are passing these uh, perform, uh, high performing strategies over multiple time periods and start getting a sense of whether or not the stocks that are passing uh, some of these promising screens actually fit your own personality. So your risk tolerances, you know, how volatile are they? Uh, do they tend to be more value oriented, value oriented, or is it you know, growth or momentum oriented? So with the screen power rankings, it'll hopefully allow you to narrow down the universe of stock screening strategies, even down to a more manageable group that you might want to start tracking on a regular basis to see if it generates stocks that might fit your overall uh, investment style. Uh, so I talked about uh, with uh, ways in which uh, we uh, A plus investor helps stock investors is the uh, the A plus stock grades, but now we also have uh, a couple of means uh, a couple of different types of stock screeners, uh, custom stock screeners beyond uh, the sixty or so stock idea screens that we offer uh, with A plus. And so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the stock grade screener. So I've talked about the AI. Uh, the A plus stock grades, again, these are the five different factor grades that we calculate for each of the 7,000 or so uh, stocks that are in the A plus stock universe. But beyond just looking at a company and what the grades are, you, we also have the A plus stock grade screener that allows you then to highlight those stocks that have the uh, sort of the, 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 the different grades that you might be most interested in. Uh, so, for example, you know, I tend to be more of a value-oriented uh, investor. So, I'm going to start by looking for stocks that have a value grade uh, exclusively of A. So, I'm looking for the deep value stocks. Uh, we've also done back testing that shows that our quality grade, um, at each higher grade, uh, the back test performance uh, of the stocks in these different grades uh, is also better. So uh, the stocks that have an A grade perform better in our backtesting period than those that have a B grade, than those that have a C grade, et cetera, et cetera. So based on that information, you know, our backtesting shows that A grade quality stocks tend to perform the best. So I'm gonna focus then on stocks that have uh, a quality grade uh, of A. Uh, also, you know, as a value investor, uh, I like to look for stocks that are starting to move. You know, one of the risks of value investing is the value trap, where you buy a stock and it either becomes even more value or just never the the market never or the market never realizes or agrees with you that this is actually an undervalued stock. So by adding a, a slight measure of momentum to these stocks, you might I might be able to find stocks that are starting to to tick upward. So let's see, I'm gonna actually look for stocks uh, that have uh, momentum grade. I'm gonna actually make it a B. And then just, I want at least average or better growth as well as estimate revisions. Um, <coughs> pardon me. So we've gone from a universe of roughly 7,000 companies to a universe of 54 that meet these, these different criteria of a, a value grade, a C or better growth, B or better momentum, C or better revisions, and A quality. So you can use mix and match, use all different uh, settings for these, but you know, let's see, find a high momentum. Uh, so, you know, Dillard's, uh, you know, stock that uh, many people probably know. Uh, let's see if anything at Movado Group, 
big five. I think that might be a VMQ stock and a, as well as a shadow stock. Uh, shoe Carnival. Uh, so yeah, quite a quite a good mix of stocks. But again, with the stock grade screener, you're able to choose your own criteria based on our five different uh, factor grades uh, and find stocks that, uh, that meet those different elements. And then lastly, uh, and I alluded to this earlier, is our new custom stock screener. Uh, and with this custom stock screener, and this is something we launched uh, again uh, about uh, a few months ago, uh, and with this, you're actually able to create your own screens. Uh, we Right now we have about 70 or so uh, fundamental variables that you can build, uh, use to build your own screen. Uh, but then you can save these screens to come back and use them uh, at a different time. Um, but some of the additional uh, features that we've added to this is, so we have our 60 or so stock idea screens. Uh, and some of these screens might still generate, even though they're, they're filters, they still might generate dozens, if not hundreds of passing companies. Um, but what you can do now is a feature that we've added is, let me just reset this to make sure I have nothing loaded. Is you can actually load the results of a, uh, stock idea screen. So I, for example, I'm gonna load the results of the estimate revisions up 5% screen. So we have 42 companies currently passing this screen now, but with the, uh, the, stock the, the custom stock screener, I can start adding variables and run additional filters against the passing companies of our, the AI stock idea screens. So for example, I wanna look at the, uh, stocks in the that are passing this screen and i'm going to look at the value grade the momentum grade and the quality grade let's see what that does for us so again i'm going to look for stocks that have a value grade of b or better i'm going to just do average momentum right now but i'm also going to be a stickler when it comes to actually take this up to so we went from 42 companies that were passing the estimate revisions up five percent screen as of yesterday's close and by applying the additional filters of looking a requiring a value grade of b or better a momentum grade of c or better or a quality grade of a we have gone from 42 companies down to five uh so this is, a, again, a new feature that we've added recently that you can run additional filters uh, against uh, the stock idea screens. But lastly, uh, before I move on from here, uh, is, apologies, uh, is that you can also run screens against the stock tickers in any of your My Portfolio portfolios. Uh, so, for example, I'm going to go ahead and load. Let's see here. I don't think I have a lot, but let's go ahead. So within my uh, my retirement portfolio, I actually only own four individual stocks. Uh, but what I can do at least is, again, look at select fundamental data because we have this multi-tab setup that you can at a minimum, load a stocks in a portfolio and look at the some of the data, select data that's available to it. But then if you also wanted to, uh, you could run uh, screens against them as well. So um, it probably was not a best example, but you can load a portfolio and then add filters to it, run those filters and narrow down uh, and identify any stocks that might you hold uh, in a given portfolio that match uh, your underlying uh, criteria. And you know we have uh, a intro video uh, that uh, I created to walk you through uh, the custom stock screener. So if you become an A-plus investor, uh, you can view this intro video. Um, 
But that sort of highlights uh, some of the uh, stock analysis, stock uh, discovery uh, tools and research and analysis that's available uh, for A plus investor subscribers. So before I pivot now in the, the remaining time uh, to fund and ETF information, Derek, do you have any uh, st questions that might be relevant to what I just covered? Yes, definitely. Uh, a lot of questions coming in. So one, one's just a logistical question. Just uh, simply, uh, people are asking where where is a plus investor found on our website. So if you could just show that. Uh, yeah, that was the. We helpful. might have we had some technical difficulties at the beginning, but it was that uh, a plus might. Oops, up if I put in the right, that could have been dangerous. So it's aai.com forward slash uh, plus. And that will take you to the My A Plus Investor Toolkit that breaks down all the different elements of A Plus Investor. And then it looks like it's just the, the tab. If you're looking on the banner there, it's to the far, far right. Yep, Wayne has his cursor over that, so. Um, that's where uh, this tool is found. Let's see. Okay, so there are a few more questions. Uh, you you were showing some of the the stock screens and capabilities uh, related to the different screens we have. There is a question. Um, uh, a participant was just asking: Is is the shadow stock screen uh, included in those screens? Uh... It was at one point, but I don't, no, actually it is not. Uh, we don't, uh, if you want to find the uh, the stocks that are passing uh, the shadow stock screen, uh, that would be uh, under my the model portfolios. Uh, there's the shadow stock portfolio. And we actually have, uh, it's run on a daily basis. Uh, it'll show you the shadow stock ideas. Uh, and this listing is updated uh, on a daily basis, showing you all of the stocks that meet the initial criteria for the model shadow stock portfolio. All right, thanks for covering that, Wayne. And just uh, there was a specific question about the screen power ranking uh, tool. Mm -hmm. um, the, the participant was just asking, is there consideration to look at shorter time periods for example, month, quarterly, just uh, they're concerned about the some of the volati volatility in the market and just we're wondering if there's shorter periods of time to, to track performance. Uh, no, because the performance is updated on a monthly basis, uh, even though the, uh, the passing companies uh, are updated on a daily basis, performance is only calculated monthly. So uh, there would be it wouldn't be as meaningful than if you were tracking monthly performance kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's why we only do uh, year to date, which would be if the starting of the year could be a one month, two month, depending on where we are. Uh, but the fact that the performance is updated monthly, that's why we don't break it down into shorter time periods. Okay, I think we'll uh, take one more and then uh, we can continue on. But um, uh, there is a question, what, is the difference between a plus investor and a platinum investor uh so a plus investor uh is sorry half of the chicago fire department is going by at the moment i'm in the office today probably for the seventh time in the last since march of last year so that's a little bit of a excitement um but uh I'm sorry, your question, Derek. Uh, it's platinum. just the, the difference between uh, oh, A, plus A plus and platinum. Investor and platinum. Yes. yes, apologies. Uh, so uh, A plus investor is a component of platinum. Uh, AAI platinum service uh, is a bundle of AAI's three premium model portfolios. So dividend investing, the stock superstars report in VMQ stocks, as well as A plus investor. So if you're an A plus investor, you are only would have access to the analytical tools that I'd be talking about here. But if you subscribe to Platinum, you get all of the elements of A plus investor plus the curated stock ideas, uh, as well as uh, you know curated addition and deletion alerts 
for AAI's three uh, premium model portfolios. Okay, thanks, Wayne. Uh, we'll we'll save uh, some questions for for later on in your presentation. Okay. Excellent. So now we've gone through the again, and I understand you know these are broad strokes running through very quickly. Uh, really, an in-depth review of this could take hours, but we have roughly an hour to talk about. So, giving you an overview of the My Portfolio tool that's in some of the exclusive elements uh, for A plus investors regarding the uh, My Portfolio tool. Walk you through some of the different stock discovery analysis uh, and screening tools that are available with A plus investor. Now, with the time we have left, I'm going to talk about some of the fund and ETF. Uh, tools and resources that are also available exclusively for A plus investors. Uh, so to kick things off, you know, very similar to what we had uh, with uh, the stock evaluators, is we have fund and ETF evaluators for uh, all of the funds and ETFs that are in the A plus investor universe. So roughly 26,000 open-ended funds, uh, and I think it's roughly 37 or 3,800 ETFs. Uh, so here, uh, again, we're looking at the Invesco S&P 500 Equal Weight ETF, ticker symbol RSP. So you have uh, a number of price and NAV returns, uh, as well as the category risk uh, and total risk. Uh, gives you a breakdown uh, information regarding the fund itself. Uh, you have a variety of NAV, uh, as well as total return. Uh, information over a number of time periods. So these are looking at more aggregate, uh, one, three, five, ten year, uh, as well as on an annual basis. Then you have uh, portfolio statistics, so yield, total assets under management, uh, whether it's an index fund, uh, distribution of capital gains uh, and dividends. Then you have the portfolio composition, so the number of holdings, uh, the percentage of holdings in the top 10%, so it gives you an idea of really how diversified the fund is, uh, the percentage in foreign issues, uh, as well as then asset allocation breakdown uh, by stocks, bonds, other, uh, again, probably derivatives, commodities, uh, as well as cash. And then lastly, uh, any risk measures, so beta, R squared, standard deviation, typical measurement of volatility, uh, as well as in the category risk index uh, and the category risk rating. Uh, so it's how the fund or ETF stacks up within uh, its category, uh, as well as then uh, whether that's high relative to other stocks, uh, I'm sorry, other funds or ETFs within the category, as well as the total risk in, uh, index. Then information on the management team and purchase information. And you know, this purchase information will be a little bit different for mutual funds. So, you know, whether or not it's still open to new investors, minimum investments, et cetera. But these two uh, for funds and ETFs uh, are very similar to each other. So it's a good way for you to get an overview of a fund or ETF, uh, either one that you're considering buying or you know, updating your uh, when you're reviewing, doing a periodic portfolio review. Uh, to give you an update on how the fund has been doing, the one that you might be uh, currently holding. <coughs> so beyond, you know, just looking at individual funds, you know, you also have the ability to do screening for funds and ETFs uh, within A Plus Investor. On the fund side, open-ended funds, uh, we actually provide uh, 27 predefined uh, screens. Uh, we call them uh, actually first cuts. Uh, for ETFs, we have 19 predefined screens. Uh, but then you also have the ability, uh, and actually within looking at the ETF screener for A plus investor, uh, these predefined screens. Uh, so these are the 19 uh, predefined uh, ETF screens. So let's, if you're interested in looking for emerging market ETFs, you can run this. Uh, so let's see, we're looking at global asset class of equity, uh, one year NAV ranks in the top 50% of its category, 
also over the last three years. And then they're looking at international equity and diversified diversified emerging markets. So out of the 3,700 or so ETFs that we track, uh, we have 13 that pass uh, this screen, uh, the emerging market ETF screen. But you also have the ability uh, to create your own uh, screening filters and save them. Uh, so you can be running at uh, running screens, you know, based on global glo global asset class. Um, so you know, if you're an equity investor, uh, you know, if you're looking in sectors, uh, then you can specify. You know, I want to find an ETF that's focused exclusively on technology. Uh, you know, socially responsible index funds, uh, a number of return. Uh, either NAV or price returns uh, elements. So if I want to find also low cost ETFs, so I'm going to look for ETFs that are in the bottom 50%. Uh, and you know, let's see what happens when I run this particular screen. So we've gone from you know, roughly 3,700 down to 55 uh, tech-oriented ETFs uh, that have uh, below average uh, expenses. So pretty pretty generic screens, but again, we were able to narrow this down relatively quickly. Uh, we could add elements. Let's see, let's say I wanna look at, you know, what, three and five year, they're in the top 50%. So again, not overly restrictive, but let's see what that does to our returns. So we've gone from 55 down to 15. Um, but you again, you can create these custom screens for both funds uh, and ETFs, as well as saves them then uh, for uh, your future. Uh, come back and, and look at them uh, in the future. Uh, so, you know, and you can actually also want to touch on this, you can actually pref do a comparison uh, up to three. Uh, actually, it's not more. It's You can compare uh, funds or ETFs as well. So after you've run a screen, you have your passing company, uh, passing fund. Sorry, I'm very much a stock guy, and sometimes that permeates through, so I do apologize. So when you're looking at the results for either funds or ETFs, uh, you can select the funds or ETFs that you want to compare by checking off the compare box and it'll then show you the funds or ETFs that you have selected to compare. And you click the compare button and it'll show you then those funds or ETFs based on select data that we have available. So this is a good snapshot side-by-side -side comparison of funds uh, or ETFs. Um, so that's sort of, you know, again, this was very, a very quick uh, and, quick and dirty overview, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, of A-plus investor, again, very high level, uh, but hopefully it's at least piqued your interest uh, in it and actually provide you some information that might further pique your interest in just a few moments. Uh, but as I said at the kickoff, you know, once we've launched a product, we don't just rest on our laurels or move on from it. Uh, we're constantly uh, polling our subscribers uh, and getting a feel for where we can make the product better, uh, ways in which we can help them become better uh, managers of their own assets. Uh, and so to, to that end, we're actually, uh, Derek and myself and a couple of other analysts at the association, as well as our hardworking tech department, uh, we've been looking at some future A-plus investor initiatives that we hope to have bring to, fru bring to fruition uh, in the next uh, months or maybe quarter or two. Uh, but one of those uh, are my portfolio alerts. Um, so we're working on alerts based on either price change uh, for all AI members or stock grade upgrades and downgrades for A-plus investor subscribers. So some type of an email alert system uh, when these prices or grades change. Um, we've actually expanded our mutual fund and ETF data, uh, giving uh, more on a geographic region breakdown. So you get a better idea, you know, if it's a European fund, emerging markets, Asia, developed markets, Asia, uh, et cetera. Uh, market cap breakdown across both stocks and ETFs. 
so that'll be an enhancement to the diversification analyzer, uh, as well as aggregate stock and bond portfolio statistics for uh, funds and ETFs. Uh, as well as then taking some of what we learned when we built the custom stock screener uh, and taking that technology, taking that knowledge uh, and doing a revamp of the fund and ETF screeners uh, moving forward as well to make them you know, more uh, better user interface uh, as well as uh, boosting performance. <coughs> So before I bring Derek back in for uh, the Q&A section, uh, I also want to point out a special offer that we're extending today to first-time A-plus investor subscribers. Um, we're offering a $1 30-day trial uh, or a $99 six-month platinum trial. Uh, so for a dollar, you have access to full access to A-plus investor for 30 days. Uh, and the end of that period of time, uh, it then auto renews into a $149 annual subscription. Or if you want to test drive not only A plus investor, but all of AAII's um, premium model portfolios uh, a, at a significant discount in versus invest purchasing them uh, individually, then we have our six month $99 platinum trial. Um, but you can find more about this by going to invest.aaii.com forward slash a plus hyphen member hyphen sale hyphen trial um but this url is also uh, in the pdf that's available for download um but this is a limit time offer and uh, our thanks for you taking the time to uh, listen to me talk today uh but with that now uh, i'm going to bring derek back in uh and uh, be able to take some more questions all right, great presentation, Wayne. Thanks, it was very, very helpful. We do have uh, a handful of questions uh, um, that participants are asking about. So let's let's get started on a few of those. Um, let's see, we have one question about ETFs. Um, so the question is, can you see sector breakdown by ETF or search uh, by sector percentage breakdown in ETFs? Uh, no, and actually, uh realize that that was we have that we have access we've had access to that information but that information is not currently provided in the fund and etf evaluators but that is actually going to be uh, another enhancement is actually providing and showing that breakdown uh within the fund evaluators as well as uh inevitably uh being able to screen based on those percentages uh going forward so that's something will probably be again you know, at least on the evaluator side, probably uh, hopefully by the end of January, um, adding that to the funding ETF screeners might take a little bit longer. Um, not currently available, but we're aware of that deficiency and we're working to rectify it. No, I think just to kind of hit on that that point, uh, um, yeah, I mean, at the organization, we're always open to, to people's feedback. Uh, we take the feedback seriously. Uh, we get a lot of good feedback on future enhancements, so we're always looking at improving the products, and that that's a good example of of one of those things that's on our our target list. Um, let's see, we have another question here, just talking about the the compare function. Uh, they were just wondering if that's available for for stocks as well. Uh, you know, actually, that is not available for stocks. Um, never really thought about it. Um, I guess. What I would suggest doing is kind of a, a roundabout way, um, sort of a, a hack, if you will, is, um, and Derek, can you see my, can you see the AI website? I can, I see compare okay. ETFs yeah. on the screen. Okay, uh, so, uh, and this is just off the top of my head, there could be a more efficient means, but what you might want to do, uh, the person asking the question is, if you go to my portfolio uh, and create a portfolio of those, stocks that you want to compare um so create and save that portfolio then go back to the custom stock screener and as i pointed out earlier you can load a portfolio that you've created and so you can pull up that portfolio with those stocks and you know we have select uh you know what i would in my mind be probably some of the most important fundamental data 
uh, available. So you can do kind of a comparison that way by creating a portfolio. Uh, but uh, that it would be the probably the, the 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 hack to to sort of mimic what we offer for funds and ETFs. Right, excellent. There's always a way to to figure something out, right? A lot of a lot of tools. So, um, let's see. There was someone asking about just in general if there's any studies that that uh, they were asking a question about the five different factors that we use in our grading. Um, is, is there one of those particular factors that that you've found in in studies that is a good predictor of of stock price, or how how would you think about that? Uh, well, I mean, our our back testing shows that at every you know from from F to D, D to C, C to B, B to A, on the quality side, um, the higher the grade, the better the performance was over our back testing period of roughly. I think 18 or 19 years. Um, the uh, value grade that we have uh, is based on the composite methodology uh, that uh, Jim O'Shaughnessy introduced in his last edition of his book, What Works on Wall Street. Uh, and you know, Jim is a is a quant monster uh, and has done just a ton of back testing, a ton of analysis. And his analysis has shown that over the long term, a composite of individual value metrics, so PE, price of sales, shareholder yield, et cetera, a composite uh, actually yields better performance at higher uh, levels uh, versus looking at an individual element, uh, such as price to sales, uh, and, and, and using just a singular metric. So on the quality uh, and valuation side, definitely, and there's also a, a wealth of research out there that shows that you know momentum is another one of those uh, you know abnormal return uh, factors. Uh, so momentum sort of persists over time. So if you buy stocks with momentum, that momentum tends to carry over. So momentum by itself, or uh, in the way that I typically use it, is looking as integrating both value and momentum to find those value stocks. That might be uh, that the market might be responding to and identifying as truly being undervalued. So those are three elements, definitely. That there's a wealth of academic research out there that shows. And then uh, you know David Dremen, who also is a big behavioral finance uh, guy and has done a ton of research on estimate revisions. Uh, he's also found that uh, significant estimate revisions uh, applied to deep value stocks also tend to generate uh, above average returns. Uh, over the long term. Excellent. Yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of studies out there that go into those uh, different factors. Um, let's see. There, there was a just kind of following along the same lines of the the greater. Uh, a participant was asking, you know, is is profitability, uh, you know, analyzed as any as part of any of those grades? Well, let's quickly find out here. I should know this. Fortunately, it's one of those things that gets sort of pushed out. Always so much. So let's see. Profitability, I believe, is looked at on the quality side. So we have return on assets, return on invested capital, gross income to assets, buyback yield. So it's probably. We have earnings growth on the growth side, but profitability, financial strength is part of the more of the captured in the quality grade. Okay, Thank you can you. go through and, and look at it. And again, this is not a black box system. So you can go to the grades page for any of the stocks in the A plus universe to see the exact metrics that make up each of the individual factor grades. Uh, we have one here. It looks like there's a, a couple dividend investing fans uh, on the on the uh, the webinar today. They were just wondering what what types of resources are there on on dividends if they were curious about that and using a plus investor. Uh, I mean, you can there isn't a whole lot that is dedicated exclusively uh, to dividends. You know, you can screen for dividend paying stocks. You can 
screen based on dividend growth, dividend yield, et cetera, uh, using the custom stock screener. Uh, you know, there are a number uh, in number of, not a number, but there are multiple uh, stock screens that are more dividend oriented. Um, I think we have the, uh, it's the blue chip dividend, something to that effect uh, screen. Uh, so, you know, in a roundabout way, there's probably a good amount of information, but, you know, as far as to say, you know, click here for, you know, if I'm a dividend seeking investor, uh, there's probably not an ex explicit location, but there is a lot of resources that you can identify uh, dividend paying stocks with A+. Yeah, so like Wayne said, there are some screens that, uh, uh, there's the Weiss, uh, I think it's the Weiss blue chip, there's a high relative dividend yield screen, so there are some of those um, built-in screens already. Uh, just separately, um, it is part of our, our DI or dividend investing service. We do have a, uh, a dividend grader uh, that we rolled out uh, about a year ago at this time. It looks at different factors. So um, AAII does have some, some dividend investing tools, um, but that's, that's exclusively for, for DI members. Uh, let's... Would, there was one participant asking about how performance is is calculated uh, for the screens. Could you just touch on that briefly, Wayne? Sure. Uh, so I, I believe I said that performance is updated uh, on a monthly basis. So even though the individual passing companies are updated daily, performance is based uh, on, on monthly. Uh, so what we do is you know, we look at a, a given stock screen and we identify the stocks that pass that screen uh, as of the close of the last trading day of the month. So, you know, whether it's one, a hundred, a thousand, uh, we we identify the tickers that pass a given stock screen uh, on the last, as of the close of the last trading day. Then we move forward uh, to the next uh, end of the next month. Uh, and then what we do is we look at the stocks that passed the screen uh, the previous month, and we look at the average price performance of those stocks over the past month. And that is the quote unquote performance for that month of the stock screen. And then we just take a geometric return uh, of these monthly returns. And that is how we arrive at the performance that we report uh, on our website. So it's looking at the stocks that are passing the screens at the end of each month and at looking at the performance of those stocks then over the over the, the preceding proceeding month. Okay. Hey, uh, Wayne, there is a question. and We do get this one from time to time. Just uh, there's a little confusion in terms of uh, uh, ratings and numbers in different categories like value momentum quality so they're, they're just they're making the observation that uh as an x teacher f generally means extremely poor showing how do you explain an f with a 96 number in value um whereas an f that's because yes yeah. seven in quality so if you could just touch on that sure uh for all of four of the five factor grades uh the higher the grade, the higher the score, the better the grade. Um, we consciously made the choice. Uh, AAI as an organization tends to have a value slant. Uh, you know, our micro cap value performance, you know, our dividend investing. You know, just generally speaking, we tend to be more value oriented. Uh, so because of that, um, rightly or wrongly, because of that, um, we decided that when you're looking at the value score, uh, a, a lower score, which indicates you know, more attractively valued would be more attractive. So that is why a low score, which again indicates a low valuation receives a higher grade exclusively for the value grades. So a very high value stock. So again, one that has a 96 or something indicating a highly valued stock, which as a value oriented investor is not attractive, that's why it would receive an F. Thanks, that's uh, that's definitely a helpful clarification. Um, let's see, 
th there's a question here and I'm glad this participant brought this up because this is part of the, the A plus um, service. They were just wondering, is Saturday's A plus investor portfolio insights email, is that a regular feature or is that uh, just a temporary feature? No, actually, thank you for that is actually one of those things. Uh, yes, <laughs> as an A plus investor subscriber, uh, you have access to a weekly, I can pull this up really quickly. So each Saturday morning, we send out a, a weekly portfolio insights email to all A plus investor subscribers. Uh, now this email looks at all of the portfolios uh, that you've created uh, and it highlights the best performing stocks funds uh, and ETFs uh, that you track in any of the My Portfolio portfolios over the last week. Um, it also will show you, uh, and this is probably kind of blurry, uh, but you'll probably hopefully see it better in the, uh, the handouts. Uh, but we also look to see how many of the A-plus stock grades um, in for the stock journey portfolio, how many of those individual grades are B or better or D or lower. So it gives you an idea of you've got how good your overall portfolio is or you know, potentially how bad it is. Uh, we also show uh, mutual funds and ETFs that have outperformed or underperformed their category uh, in the greatest number of years. Uh, it also, uh, the email also shows you any additions or drop-offs uh, for any of the stock screening strategies that you track. And I didn't touch on that, but any of the 60 or so stock screens that we track, you can actually favorite them uh, and be able to go and, and look at and pull up just those screens that you track. So it sort of again sifts through the noise and only be able, allows you to focus on those strategies that are most interest to you. Uh, and then lastly, <clears throat> it also shows you the breakdown for all of the holdings uh, in, a, in all of your portfolios, um, what your overall asset allocation is, uh, what the typical as asset allocation is amongst all A plus investor subscribers, as well as the three AAII um, asset allocation models, as well as then finally, uh, oh, that's interesting, uh, as well as your stock sector breakdown. And it should actually give you uh, this actually, I must admit, is an old email, so hopefully this is still not the case, but also gives you your stock holding sector breakdown as well as the equal weighted breakdown for the S&P 500 equal weighted, uh, so the RSP. So yes, uh, that is a regular weekly feature uh, and it's not a special feature. That's something that we send out uh, each week. Uh, if you have time, I, I, uh, if we could take three more. Um... I oh, yeah. take a few more. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, uh, this is just a question. We look, looks like one of the participate participants is interested in metal and mining stocks. Uh, they were just wondering how would you find stocks in a specific industry? So you can come to the custom stock screener. We're going to add filters and we'll probably be looking at the, at the sector industry level. So probably, there we go. So we have metals and mining, aluminum diversified. So 212 companies in the 7,000 plus stock universe are in industries dealing with metals and mining as indicated by uh, Refinitiv, our data provider. So you're able to screen at the sector or the industry level using the custom stock screener. Excellent. Um, two more. Let's see. Um... There is a question about uh, clean energy going green. Are there are there any ETFs or stock screens helpful in selecting 
uh, going green stocks? How would, if someone's interested in, in those types of stocks, what would be the best way to find those? We have, let's see here, let's do ETF screener. So it would not, it would not exclusively identify just those, but we have screens on the ETF and fund screeners for socially responsible. So again, it's not going to, uh, you know, not all funds passing this are green stocks, but any, any green funds, but any green funds should be passing uh, this particular uh, filter. Uh, so this is one of the predefined screens. So we've got 33 entries on the ETF universe side. And then, so you can get an idea just looking at, so you've got the ELPS clean energy, green energy, clean tech. So probably a number of these are probably either sustainable or green, but not all of them. But this is at least a good first screen you can run to go from the 27, 37 to 3,800 ETFs down to, you know, a max of 33. All right. And uh, I think the last question, just a uh, participant's asking, uh, how would you describe the main differences between A plus investor and stock investor pro? Uh, stock investor pro is exclusively a software based stock screening program. Uh, so it's roughly the same database of companies that you get with the custom stock screener with A+. Uh, it does offer uh, more uh, in-depth screening uh, capabilities. Uh, so if you are a true do-it-yourself stock screener, uh, Stock Investor Pro would be the way you'd want to go. Uh, but it's strictly stocks. A+, Investor offers... Uh, discovery, analysis, and tracking of stocks, mutual funds, and ETFs. So it is kind of a one-stop shop, online uh, discovery, analysis, and tracking tool versus Stock Investor Pro is a software-based fundamental stock screening and research database program. Excellent, uh, Wayne, really appreciate you answering a lot of those questions. Uh, I think that's all we have time for today. So thank you. Well, thank you, Derek, uh, and you know, thank you, Jenna, uh, and you know, I just want to take this opportunity uh, to wish everyone uh, a happy and safe holiday season uh, and a very prosperous and safe New Year. Uh, but thank you, Jenna, for uh, overseeing this uh, event today, and Derek, thank you very much for moderating. Uh, but with that, I am going to sign off and uh, happy New Year, everybody. And I want to thank uh, Wayne. Thanks so much for introducing us to some exciting new enhancements to A Plus Investor. I'm sure everyone's excited to start using the new tools and additions that we mentioned. And I want to mention again, um, if, uh, since we had some te technical difficulties in the beginning of the broadcast, that this presentation is recorded and a replay of the webinar will be available tomorrow on AAII's YouTube channel, along with links to this presentation's handouts, as well as any resources that we discussed. And before we wrap up, our webinar and, and announce uh, uh, upcoming uh, events, we'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Discover Bank, with a quick video. So just give me a one second. And now for a message from our friends at Discover Bank. We know as individuals interested in building investor wealth, you never want your money to be idle. Even small dollar amounts for short amounts of time should be working for you. With that, we're pleased to share information from our partner, Discover Bank, on deposit accounts that keep your money moving. You can choose from several options to help you meet your short-term or long-term financial goals. The best part? All of the deposit accounts offer preferred member rates. Take a look. With Discover, you can earn over five times more interest than the national savings average with preferred member rates and pay no fees. That's no fees, period. Plus, no minimum balance is required. You can access your AAII member savings account with Discover Bank from your smartphone or tablet, so it's easy to keep your money moving in the right direction. Open an AAII online savings account to start saving for the future today. Visit aaii.discoverbank.com to learn more. 
Thank you so much. And um, I also want to um, share a few upcoming webinars. So on uh, Wednesday, let me set up the handouts real quick so you can see. So um, I just wanted to uh, showcase a few. So on Wednesday, January 5th, 2022, we have two exciting presentations, which are the PRISM Academy office hours at 1130 AM Central and the Individual Investor Show, Two Easy Ways to Take Control of Your Investing at 730 PM uh, Central. In addition, we have a rebroadcast of our AAII Platinum Open House, which will be on Monday, January 10th, 2022 at 2 p.m. Central, as well as a new webinar, a guided tour of AAII Stock Investor Pro Fundamental Stock Screening Software presented by Wayne Thorpe, which will, be de which will debut on Wednesday, January 12th, 2022 at 1 p.m. Central. And to view and register for any upcoming webinars that we have, you can visit aaii.com slash webinars. And with that, we wish all of you viewing good health, good fortune, and a great evening. Thank you and take care.